My name is Mike Allison. I'm a senior director at Samsung, working with our SSDs, and I focus on standards. Um, in NVMe, I'm uh, the lead author for the technical proposal that is going through NVMe, and yes, it is in 30-day member review, hoping to get it ratified before the end of the year. So with that, let's talk about flexible data placement. And we're going to start with what we're going to call the FTP configuration. And we're going to start at the bottom up of what is the media and then work our way up to how we expose that media to the host so the host can then do placement into uh, the drive itself. Fundamentally, we start off with the media itself. And I'm going to specifically talk about SSDs and NAND. So Fundamentally, there's going to be a thing called a reclaim unit, and a reclaim unit is the portion of NAND where when a write happens to the host is, is where it's placed. The size of the reclaim unit will be advertised from the controller to the host, and the size is going to be based on the erase, erasing size of the media that it's being exposed. Okay? Now, a, a reclaim unit could be a single SSD NAND block or it could be multiple of blocks. Earlier, they talked about a super block. And what a super block is, is you take a block from various dies and you combine them together and manage them as one, and it's called a super block. So when you write a super block, you've written a block across all your dies, and when you erase it, you erase across all the dies. Okay? In the proposal, we're not telling them how to do the, the manipulation of media to the host. That's actually going to be exposed by the SSD to the host as to what a reclaim unit is, and there will be a negotiation between vendors and customers to define the needs, but the protocol will allow for that advertisement of what is supported by the drive. Now, the, re the meet, uh, reclaim units can be grouped into things called reclaim groups, and reclaim groups is where the placement is going to happen. So a host can write to a reclaim unit within a reclaim group. The controller selects the reclaim units. The host gets to say, write it to this reclaim group. And I'm going to go through an example of writes to show you how this all works. Now, reclaim groups could be um, one reclaim group where I have all the super blocks in, in each of the reclaim units, and so I have all the blocks across all the dies. Um, it could be a reclaim group is per die, all the uh, different blocks within there. You know, the spec is not going to get into how we do the mapping, but there's just a couple of examples of how you could do it. And then you have the resources that support doing the writes into the reclaim units, which we're calling the reclaim unit handles. Each reclaim unit handle has a reference to a reclaim unit in each reclaim group. Okay, so and it goes across all of them. The other thing is, uh, in the development of this, we decided to encapsulate the whole entire FDP capability within one of the storage entities as an endurance group. So if you support FDP, you have to support an endurance group. And you can have multiple endurance groups. I'm going to talk about just one endurance group, because FDP as it is applied to each endurance group is unique for each endurance group you support. So for example, if you created an, uh, devi an NVM de device that had two different media types and you wanted to support FTP in those two media things, they could actually have different configurations that they support because it's different media if you wanted to do that. Um, we're going to have the ability, by specification, FTP will be disabled by delivery from the SSD vendor. Hosts have to enable it. So there will be a way to say, hey, in this endurance group, go enable a particular configuration. Now, and then the other thing is, um, then write commands are going to provide a tuple of information. One is an identifier that identifies the reclaim unit handle that is targeted for the write and the reclaim group. And that tuple will get you down to the specific reclaim unit that's being referenced by that reclaim unit handle to actually perform the write. So that's fundamentally the basis of what's, of what's going on. So let's get into a couple of things. First of all is NVMe has namespaces. And how does a namespace map to this placement? And what we're doing is um, during namespace creation in the, in the namespace management command, the host can specify a map, and that map is going to have a localization indexing 
into the reclaim unit identifiers that that namespace has access to. So a host has the ability to assign which reclaim unit handles or the resources used for writing to be allocated to a particular namespace. A reclaim unit handle can be dedicated to a single namespace or it could be shared, but that decision is based on the host. Now one thing that you'll notice here is when Chris gave the earlier presentation and they said, hey, today when you write an SSD to different namespaces, they could actually be written into the same location um, on the same super block and intermix the data. If you share a reclaim unit handle across two namespaces, you're saying you want that data mixed. So you still have that capability, but you can also say, I don't want to have my namespaces share a reclaim unit handle, and then we have the uh, data isolation at the reclaim unit handle level. Um, the other thing is, um, for backwards compatibility, we're allowing the namespace management command to not provide this mapping of indexes to reclaim unit handles. So if on the command there is no mapping provided by the host, the controller will build a map automatically. So from a controller point of view, I always have this mapping of a localized namespace index that's going to identify which reclaim unit is associated with that namespace. So from the controller side, it's the same behavior. I just always have this mapping table that does the translation, but from the host side, they can choose to, to specify it or not. So that's the fundamental basics of how everything's get together. So let's just actually walk through a command. So before I start walking through a command, so I have an, an SSD here, and for simplicity, I just did one reclaim group um, with a bunch of reclaim units um, in there. Now, I've numbered the reclaim units here only for this presentation. In the protocol, reclaim units are not numbered to the host. The host doesn't know how many there are, what's their number, what's the actual real physical location of the NAND other than the reclaim group, okay? So I do have reclaim group zero, and then I have these reclaim unit handles, RUHs. There's four of them that the controller is providing in this particular FTP configuration. And I have a namespace that was created. Namespace was created with the map and I have three usage of RUHs, and you'll notice here it's zero, two, and three, and as you can, if you follow the colors there, you can see that um, re, um, the index zero goes to RUH zero, and RUH zero goes to RU zero, and for simplicity, I didn't want to cross any lines, um, and then I have partial writes that are already happening. Now, one th um, so with that, let's do a, let's do a, 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 a real write command. So host issues a write, to namespace A, specifying index one and reclaim group zero. So that's the tuple from the host side. As that comes into the controller, the first thing the controller is gonna do is take that index and say, hey, index one, what reclaim unit handle am I going to use? And he finds out that he's gonna use reclaim unit handle two. So then the controller knows the, the tuple of the RUH and the um, reclaim group to where to write it. So he's gonna write it to reclaim unit handle two, go through that write resource, and actually write it to RU3 that's currently being referenced by RUH2. And you wrote the data, the host placed the data. Okay? Let's do another scenario here. This time, we're gonna write same namespace, we're gonna do index two, um, comes in, same reclaim group, we're gonna write, we look up index two, it goes to uh, RUH3, writes it to RUH3, and the same thing happens. We ended up getting into RUH4. Same pla another placement in a, different RU in a different reclaim unit. However, in this case here, we filled the RU to capacity, or we wrote more data than what fits in the capacity, but in this explanation, I filled it to capacity. When that happens, the controller automatically says, hey, my RU is full, so I'm gonna swap out the RU to a different RU, and, uh, and now it's gonna point to RU2, which is empty. That's automatic by the, by the controller. The host can just keep writing to a particular R RUH, or a particular localized index, and the automation of going from one reclaim unit to the next to keep the writes going forward automatically happen. Now, there, we wanted to also be backwards compatible. What if I take a drive that supports FTP, and I plug it into a, a server that doesn't support FTP. We wanted to be backwards compatible as well. So we have this case here 
where now a host is going to write, and it's not going to specify an index or an RG. It's just a normal write that you're doing today with NVMe 2.0. When that happens, co comes into the controller, now the controller doesn't have the tuple. But what we're going to do is we force entry zero to be the default used for the write. So, there, so the tuple, at least in terms of the RUH, is known. And we're allowing the controller to select the reclaim group of where that write occurs. And the reason we do that is so they can distribute the writes and do the endurance across all the media that's on there. And so with that then, the write will come in, he'll know that go to reclaim group uh, RUH0 and write it to RUH0. So fundamentally, that's the basics of how we do the placement. Now, so for my final slide, I want to cover a couple things. I'm not giving you all of the details of the technical proposal because it's in process. Um, but the, the biggest thing I want to say is the host does get to do the placement into the reclaim units. But it's up to the host to manage which LBAs written to which reclaim unit. And if they want to remove GC from the drive, they need to take care of that data before the controller does do any garbage collection. So by default, the SSDs will protect the data if they have to, but if the host intervenes and, and gets rid of the data before the, the SSD takes care of it, then you can reduce your WAF. We're also adding some additional stuff. One is some, uh, you can read statistics on uh, the actual WAF that's happening within that endurance group. So if you have multiple endurance groups. And we also um, are allowing uh, the host to say, hey, I want you to align to new reclaim units. I want to go to a fresh reclaim unit because I want to start managing at a particular point. So there's going to be a new IO command that comes in that says, hey, take all your reclaim units and move them to a particular new RU, RU re reclaim unit. I get mixed with all the acronyms going on here. Um, the other thing is, for if a host is trying to take advantage of FDP to reduce WAF, they have to manage the rules. And if they don't manage the rules, then there is an issue. So one of the things we put in is the host can enable events to be generated into a log page that says, I detected you didn't honor the rules and um, you're probably not getting what you want. And there will be a log page that can be pulled for them to say, hey, there was a previous command that violated the rules that you were trying to maintain you probably got to go fix your host software if you really wanted to manage it correctly and reduce WAF. Um, as I stated before, it's fully backwards compatible, both with the namespace management command and with all of the write commands that are available to write to the SSD. So with that, there is a call to action. Um, this is in development. Um, if you are an NVMe member, please read the spec. It's out there for member review. Please send me back feedback. If you have great ideas going forward in the future, because I'm sure we're not done with this, uh, please come and join the team. And I'm pretty sure that there will be a future OCP spec that says you shall support FDP in OCP compliant drives. So with that, any questions? There's got to be a ton. I'm not that good. <laughs> yes? Yeah, can you go to the mic, please? So when you when you allocate the uh, group, do you carve out like a certain section of LBAs within the SSD and apply that to the namespace and the group to no, no. let those writes go in there? So when a write comes in, an LBA, the write still has the LBA where it's going to be written, uh -huh. and there is going to be a new directive in the write command that says where to place it. So the namespace can be written to any reclaim group in the endurance group, okay? So even within, excuse me. <coughs> so a host could say, I want to write all this namespace to just one reclaim group, or it could say, I want to go across all them to get the endurance going across for that namespace. But it's always under the host control. From a controller point of view, I get a write command, I look it up, the placement, and I place it there. And if if they want to do the distribution across all the reclaim groups, that's up to the host. Okay, good question. Any other questions? Well, with that, thank you. <laughs>